Wars and action figure fans, it's the one and only Optibotomus coming to you with another video review. And today we're going to be doing a bit of a retro review and going back in time and taking a look at something that I honestly never really expected myself to buy. That is until a really good deal came across my Facebook page. Now many of you know that from the very beginning I was a huge Transformers fan. During the time that Transformers was on in the 80s, there was another transforming robot show that was produced by Hanna-Barbera by the name of GoBots. Now towards the end of that run, they tried their hand at doing another show that was first introduced to us with an actual movie, that being the Rock Lords. Now, with the gaining popularity of Transformers, Rock Lords really didn't stand much of a chance. But the company Tonka actually made several figures for it. And that's what I have today. Like I said, this deal came across my Facebook page and I really couldn't pass on it. It essentially had all of the characters from the original kind of GoBot Rock Lord crossover movie titled GoBots Battle of the Rock Lords. And one in particular really stood out because I remember having it as a kid. Somehow, someway, I got lucky at a flea market and found them, bought them, and really he became one of my favorite toys. But then somehow, someway, I lost it. And I remember losing it as a kid and being really upset about it. I looked everywhere. I could never find it. That figure being nugget now i didn't really expect it to be in this great of condition when i saw the pictures all of them i, I knew they were carded i know they were going to have like bags and everything with them I and mean, that really kind of blew my mind but uh, i am going to open these uh it's probably going to upset several people because these are mint on card and i mean the cards are you know a little bit bent uh this one's not that bad uh tombstones you can see kind of gets a little bit wonky but all of them have kind of a bend to them and honestly i just want to play with them i think they're cool but this is how the cards used to be back in the day i mean you got rock lords powerful living rocks you can see nugget he's a heroic rock warrior uh, it comes with like a little collector card or something on the inside there i'm not exactly sure what that's all about uh, you can run to the back and you can see all the figures that I i'm guessing were in this wave i'm not 100 percent certain but you got boulder Sticks and Stones, Granite, Nugget, Magmar, and Tombstone. And all seven, or all six of them, I have here with the addition of another one as well. You can see you got a little bit of a comic up there. Uh, do all of them actually have that? Yeah, they actually do. So you can see him rolling around. That kind of looks like Boulder right there. We've reached our hiding place. Rumble, 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 rumble. Transform. Well, I guess maybe they rumble when they transform. So instead of just sound, they go rumble, rumble, rumble. That's the noise. And then he says, I'll fly ahead and do some scouting so nugget it was kind of like a bumblebee ish kind of character but was really intelligent and he really helped him out uh, in, in a lot of different kind of ways uh the the collector card right here i should really keep these cards for for some reason uh it says his rank is a good rock warrior okay his body type is golden a shiny metallic finish that covers his robotic circuitry uh, his weapon is a trigun uh, that's that little guy right there and it says though he's a robot nugget is worth his weight in gold he's smaller than the other rock warriors but brave and bold beyond his size nugget is very proud of his shiny finish so i mean there you can see where there's some kind of bumblebee sort of i guess connections nuggets trigun does triple duty the top barrel hypnotizes the second barrel paralyzes and the third barrel revives the unlikely victim for questioning and then yeah like i said you got the other figures that are out there so there's that guy now we also have granite and again he comes in a nice plastic kind of thing so let's get this out of here i'm going to be a little bit more careful in opening these because like i said i, I do kind of want to keep these just for nostalgia um his head has now fallen down underneath there but you can see again on the nice package i really like that uh little oh you can actually there's like i just noticed that one but there's like other faces around there he's a uh, heroic rock warrior as well come around to the back again you got those same figures you got a little comic it says let's blast them boulder rumble 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 so yeah that's apparently how they transform now i'm ready to suck some rocks uh, so he's kind of like well, his rank is a good rock warrior too he's made out of granite a tough as nails composition that reflects his strength and determination his weapon is a t-gun which 
doesn't really look like a T, but and whatever. A happy-go-lucky rock with a ready laugh. Granite is truly a gentle giant, but put him in the thick of a fight, and he's one of the most fearsome combatants on the battlefield. Despite its ordinary appearance, the T gun's shiny bullets will pierce anything and that's enough to send any evil rock running for cover so granted appears to kind of be uh like an iron hide i guess type of character so there's that moving on to the leader of the uh, rock lords now the thing is with the rock lords there were several different things that they did they did rock lords they did jewel lords they had other kind of branches i guess and I'll, I'll get to that here in a bit but boulder here was kind of like the leader of the i guess rock lords so uh, the other ones was like fossil lords as well so they had all sorts of different things you come around the back one thing that is kind of neat is that the bubbles uh and this is not the case nowadays the bubbles are all uniquely shaped to the actual figure so you can see like with nugget here you got these little bits here on the side that goes out obviously boulder doesn't have that obviously granite doesn't as well so it's kind of cool that the actual bubble fit the actual character so it's very unique in that regard and then uh, the little comic magmar is trapped Now's our chance, Nugget. Rumble, 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 rumble. Rock Lords, attack. And then you got the little read up. And this is a little bit different. He's a, a Rock Lord and he's a good leader. He's made out of tungsten, but it says tungsten is among the toughest of all minerals. It shows durability and resolve. His weapon is the power sword. So there's his little power sword, I guess. And it says that he's a brave and wise with an awesome physique. Boulder leads the defense of Cortex against Magmar's villainous plots. Boulder has rallied the remaining free kingdoms of the planet under his leadership. His fiery temper strikes fear into friend and foe alike. In the heat of battle, he scatters enemies with stun gun blasts and zaps them with his power sword. So again, the leader of these guys. Now, in terms of the other good guys, this is what I was talking about. Now, now this one I did not get packaged. This came loose and you can it's actually going to be a little bit hard to see because as you can see, she's a little bit translucent. Now when we're first introduced to the Rock Lords, we're introduced to both Nugget in Sapphire. Sapphire is one of the jewel lords that goes to Gobatron to enlist in the help of the other Gobots. We'll take a look at her as well, but she's one of the good guys that I wanted to have added into this and then technically, like, she's supposed to be transformed like this, but uh, you, then you just put her on the ground, but I kind of like these are her feet and this is her weapon and we'll touch on all that here in a bit, but I kind of like doing that so kind of keeps her standing up. Now for the bad guys, uh, this is that tombstone. Now I actually also remember having tombstone as a kid. Uh, this one, I remember being very, very upset about because this I kept. I could not lose this to save my life. Whereas Nugget, the one that I loved, I lost. So I had resentment against this guy. But again, the the bubble is different. The the, the card back is the same. Ages five and up. There's cautionary stuff there. Again, made by Tonka, which most of you will probably recognize from like trucks. That's where they kind of got their I guess notoriety coming to the back. And then up here, the comic says, "I'll show them who's a fighter." Rumble, rumble, rumble. I'm the toughest rock lord there is. And, all right, whatever. You can see he's an evil rock warrior he's made out of quartz and flashes with the wicked glint as he goes about his deadly chores his weapon is the reaper and kind of boring looking but all right whatever tombstone lives to fight the evil warrior cares about only one thing destroying good rocks the last thing tombstone wants to hear about is peace a good battle will make his day as he rushes heedlessly at the enemy swinging the reaper wildly and laughing at his foes as they retreat from the twirling scythe now again that doesn't really look like a scythe but and whatever so uh, maybe he's, I mean, I, I remember in the Battle of the Rock Lords, he seemed to kind of always be there and sort of seemed like maybe a sound wave, very loyal type. So maybe he's like a sound wave type of character. Uh, then we come to Sticks and Stones. This guy's actually fairly heavy. Uh, he's a little bit bigger 
get that out of here. Uh, now, I mean, see, like, the cards are actually in, in really good shape. I mean, they are a little bit warped and everything, but, you know, I, I'm opening them. You got the various figures. You got the comic. Let's get ready for action, Stones. Rumble, 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 rumble. I'll show you how it's done, Sticks. Now, this was like a dual personality kind of character. Obviously, he's got two heads, so talks back and forth which was kind of interesting and he's uh, actually made up according to this of uh, anthracite which is coal and magnetite a dangerous combination of minerals that causes sparks so all right so i guess sure whatever his uh, weapon is a cactus club for sticks and double duty mace for stones um i don't see two weapons in there though so and it is what it is sticks and stones are living proof that two heads are worse than one they're constantly at odds with each other but give them a single purpose destroying good rocks and they become an awesome fighting force the very sight of them charging into battle with their cactus club and double duty mace is enough to send enemies flying home so again i mean i mean I only see really one weapon in there, so I, I guess he doesn't technically come with two, but I don't really know who you could say uh, he kind of reminds me of in terms of a Transformer, I guess, uh, so... He's just going to go, whatever. Uh, now, the other one that I have, now this one is not in here, but you can see... This is like from an, another wave. He was in the uh, Battle of the Rock Lord movie. Uh, the packaging is the exact same in terms of the card and everything. Obviously, the bubble's different. And this kind of, this is Slimestone. He kind of looks like a nugget um, type of character. Uh, I don't think, I mean, it doesn't look like it's remolded. I mean, it looks completely new, which is kind of neat. I love the way that guy looks. It never had him, never even knew he existed uh, as a toy. You come to the back, though, and here are the other new figures. So you have Crackpot, which was in the movie. Uh, obviously, Slimestone, which is here. Pulverize, Marbles, Brimstone, and Stoneheart. Now, these are all other figures that were in the movie. I, Marbles like was like a psychic. Uh, pulverize uh, he constantly ate rocks i believe slimestone just would shoot weird stuff and what's interesting is like his eyes one's red and one is uh green whereas both of them are green here uh these obviously were two bad guys and everything that crackpot was he, he kind of seemed like a wheeljack kind of character or a ratchet or something like that so i gotta try getting the rest of these guys at some point in time i don't know if i'll get lucky enough to get them all carded like this but we'll see how it goes uh you got the comic up there ah this oil bath feels great rumble 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 now i'm gonna sling some slime he's a evil rock warrior his body type is silvery so while this is like gold he's silver which is cool a shiny plating that covers a slimy character his weapon is a slime gun, which, again, that doesn't look like a slime gun. It looks more like a key, but all right, whatever. Slimestone is a rock warrior with a very different personality. Short, squat, and, and disgustingly sinister, Slimestone enjoys wallowing in pools of boiling oil. Slimestone delights in using a slime gun to smear enemies with evil-smelling sticky stuff that's impossible to get off. So, like I said, uh, you basically have, like, wave one here, and then this seems to maybe be wave two or something i i don't know and then finally the leader of the bad guys open this one up so we had boulder who was the leader of the good guys this as magmar the leader of the bad guys again same card you got a different bubble come around here again part of that first wave the comic up here says it's time to attack boulder's hideout rumble 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 soon i will rule Cortex. And in the movie, he teamed up with Psykill to try to beat them all, and that didn't really work out too well. You can see he's a rock lord, and he's the evil leader. His body type is igneous, I think igneous, formed of molten lava that reflects his fiery emotions. His weapon is an axe rifle. Um, again, doesn't really look like an axe rifle. Kind of looks like a club but whatever, it, none of these seem to really match. Magmar is the most cunning and evil-minded of the Rock Lords. His domineering personality and physical strength make him a fearful presence to all but the most brave. Magmar lives to conquer the rock planet Cortex. His favorite activity is combat. Wielding his axe rifle with deadly accuracy, he assaults foes scattering rocks and pebbles as he goes. 
So that's all of the uh, the figures that I picked up. Uh, I am going to open them up and I'm going to show you a closer look. I'm already, this is definitely going to be a long video, so hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, I don't have any kind of bio or anything on uh, Solitaire, unfortunately, but this is one that we'll take a look at as well. So for the packaging on everything, that is about it. So, without further ado, let's get these 30-year-old toys opened up out of their packaging and see how cool they actually are. All right, so here are my collection of Rock Lords opened up and out of their packaging. And one thing that I do want to say, like I said, I'm going to keep these. It just kind of ripped this off, but I kind of like the card back and everything. That's kind of cool looking. Uh, but what I thought was a collector card is actually a comic book. Now, the instructions are also slid in here. Very simple instructions. This is it for it. Uh, so you can see like step one, step, oh, and then you flip it over. It's not very easy to do. Uh, step two, step three, step four, step five, and six. I mean, uh, well, then step seven is just the form. So not really seven steps or anything. Shows how to actually attach the weapon and everything. These instructions were inside this. This is actually a little comic book, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, unfortunately, the comic books are all the same amongst all the actual figures. I'm, I'm curious because I know that, uh, where is he at? I know Slimestone is like part of a, another wave of uh, figures. So I wonder if his is the same as well. Um, yeah, that, yeah, it's the same comic book, unfortunately. So even when they came out with the second wave of uh, comics or, or characters, uh, the actual comics were the same, which is a lot of unfortunate, but it, it is what it is. But I just thought that was kind of cool. Now, in the movie, like I said, Nugget and Solitaire went off. I think I actually called her Sapphire in the video, so ignore me. Uh, they went off to Gobatron because Magmar was collecting all the various weapons, each lord. So you had the rock lords, the jewel lords, all the, yeah, the fossil lords, all these different lords on the planet of uh, Cortex had a special weapon that Magmar was trying to collect them all to use to create one massive weapon. It was kind of like Lord of the Rings, to be honest. He was collecting all of them to kind of control them all. Now, the unfortunate nature of things is the Battle of the Rock Lords was the only sort of cartoon that we got featuring the Rock Lords. After that, while the toy line continued, there was no and it continued TV series, which is a little unfortunate. But I'm, regardless, still pretty impressed that they went ahead with, I think, three series of these figures. But as you can see, the rocks, I mean, er, well, what kind of look like rocks, I, I guess. Now, people would probably say, oh, what, what kind of fun is it? I mean, I can have a, a car that transforms into a robot. Why do I want to have a rock that transforms? I, who knows? I, don't, I, I, I have no idea. But when I was a kid, I thought they were cool. Kids nowadays probably think they're completely dumb, which is fine. I, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, starting things off first, we're going to take a look at Nugget. Now, this one here, as well as Slimestone, can cause some problems because as you can see, got a very nice chrome on here. Most of the ones that you'll see on eBay, the chrome has worn off. The plastic underneath is yellow, so it's not too terribly bad. But finding one that is in this good a condition is fairly rare. A lot of the times, just because it wears off from being played with. Hopefully with me, I'm not going to play with it that much. I'm just going to display it. So it should keep its luster fairly well. But I, the, I love this. Between this and Slimestone, the look is probably the best on it. Because, well, no, I mean, Boulder is pretty good too. The soap suits, oh, they're all pretty good. But I love the way that this guy looks. It, it, but it's a rock. It, it just, I mean, you can sit it there. It'll probably fall. But you can, it's a rock. That's all you do with it. Just... <laughs> yeah, I know. As an adult, I'm looking back. I'm like, really? A rock? It's... That's all it's doing. It's whatever it's supposed to do, it's doing it right now. So, I mean, I can see where people will be like, meh, whatever. Uh, as far as his weapon, uh, this is his trigun. Uh, again, I don't understand why it's a trigun. It doesn't really look like a, a gun at all. Uh, pretty decent detail, though. You can see some nice tech detail on the back. You got some weird nipply looking things there in the front uh, well if, if it focuses on it you can see weird look there uh, now to transform him we're just going to lift these bits up like so this piece here kind of wedge your fingernail in there and this is kind of cool you got a bit of automorph when you lift this 
it brings out his little thrusters, which is cool. Then you got his little feet, slide these down, make sure you push them all the way. This is also something that when you're looking to buy these, you do have to make sure of a few things. Obviously you can look and see how the luster is on it, see if it's worn out. But the other thing is how are the, the joints here, specifically in the legs. So when you rotate these down, they actually lock into place a lot of figures will have that be worn off and he stands like that he, he just collapses under his own weight so you do want to make sure that those are nice and secure and obviously because this was right out of a package it's going to be folding out his arms like so now the thing with nugget is and they touched about this in the film itself uh he predates everything all of the other rock lords were organic at some point in time much like gobots were believe it or not gobots were actually organic that through some means i don't remember what it was they changed to robots it's the same thing with the rock lords they were organic and they became infused with rocks not Nugget, he was a robot from the very beginning and he became a rock of sorts. So uh, fairly cool, there's actually, I'm going to slide this. <laughs> this is, it's a, got a super glue effect on here. Um, <laughs> it's a wedding ring. There's die cast in there. This little piece right here is die cast. His legs are made out of die cast. The rest is done in a very nice reflective chrome. Even his arms, which I, I can see why I love this so much as a kid. And honestly, playing with this now really does remind me of uh, being a kid and just how much fun I had with this. It's so cool. But you can kind of see like right here, actually, a little bit of a wear on it that's just normal wear and tear as you move it around flakes and because this is like vac metal or something like that it's you're going to get and you got a little piece right there from it as well so it's going to happen but hey, his weapon you just take this and you hold it out and then you clip this little bit around there and there's his weapon and there you have nougat although you can't see him anymore because he's off camera there's nougat up next we have granite which like i said is kind of like the iron hide of the group or so and you can see he transforms into a flat rock uh you can kind if you balance them very carefully it's hard because this is kind of rounded so it's not really meant to stand up there it is just going to roll down there but again pretty nice i mean you can kind of see that uh, there are some gaps here with things, so that does kind of dis destroy the illusion uh, of sorts. So that doesn't really stay up there all that well. But, I mean, you can see that he transforms into something. One thing that I also want to talk about is, uh, like I was talking about, they did different series. They have these little furry ones. Uh, I remember them in the movie, but they're little rocks that were like elephants or alligators or something. So I don't really think I'll ever want to get those. But, uh, oh, the gnarlies. That's what, the ferocious gnarlies coming soon to a store in New York. So again, the, the comic book is the exact same. Just kind of goes through, gives you a little bit of an adventure form which is neat uh, you do have his instructions as well just this one little tiny sheet you also have his weapon which this is his t-gun again why they call it a t-gun i have no clue because it doesn't look like a t at all it just looks kind of like a gun but nice molded detail got a little peg right here which comes in handy for attaching it to uh, transform him you just take him kind of pull these legs away and knock things down rotate that down pull them around they uh, have a little spring section here at the thigh so you kind of pull that apart and then bring that down fold the little feet around like that take this spin that around then you bring his arms up and rotate them down like so this section here you just slide up and reveal his head now i was like oh wait a minute the package doesn't show his head so luckily it's actually just a sliding thing so uh, it wasn't anything bad or anything I, I thought maybe there was like a thing that you had to pull up to do it but luckily that actually pulls it up there and keeps it there pretty well you got the little peg right here you can put his gun in there it doesn't really hold it very well Let's be honest, it just kind of sits there and doesn't really, you, know, you kind of wedge it in there with the finger. So you can have 
that and there you have granite and now one thing i didn't do is uh, go over the articulation for nugget nothing at the head but you got a little pin hinge joint right here so you can rotate that forward and back it moves in and out he bends here at the elbow the legs kind of wiggle forward and back and just i think that's just because the little die cast piece fits up in a little groove so it just kind of wiggles a little so you can kind of move the legs a little but uh, that's it for his articulation for granite here the head yeah that's locked into place the uh, shoulders he does rotate uh, i guess at the elbows he moves in and out like so he's got in and out movement for the hips bends here at the knee he rotates at the thigh so pretty decent articulation honestly uh, i mean they they just kind of stand there but it is what it is so there you have granite now up next we have Solitaire. Now this unfortunately, like I said, was not a figure that I picked up carded. Uh, it, there were no carded versions. This is actually a fairly hard figure to find. And when I bought this set, Solitaire was not a part of it. I went on eBay and had to buy this separately. This is actually an expensive figure. This is gonna cost you between 75 to hundred dollars for this figure especially if she comes with her weapon now this is a, a different release unlike these ones which were released here in North America by Tonka overseas in Europe the figures were also released but were released through Bandai this is actually a Bandai figure and I don't know if that affects the value or not but if you come around here and it's kind of hard to see because it's printed on the inside of her leg but there's a little print mark right there but it's backwards you have to read it through the inside here which is really difficult so i had to read it through this and read it backwards but it says bandai bandai on there so this was the european release the figures are the exact same i think the package was a little bit different but the figures were the same nonetheless i don't know if that affects the overall value of the figure or what but this is one that i had to have because solitaire is a pretty pivotal character in the battle of the rock lords and if i was going to get all these i wanted to get her as well now like i said the biggest thing is her weapon this one can easily cut if you don't have this this figure can cost probably about 40 to 50 dollars this will range between 50 and 60 bucks to, i don't know why people lose these weapons so i'm pretty lucky to have it now this was the weapon that she used in the film itself so it's cool to see that she actually comes with it all these other weapons i don't remember ever seeing any of them in the movie this one though stands out quite clearly and as you can see she has this translucent kind of thing it's a little bit bluish i know it's coming across hard on my screen but you can see it has some darker blue than some lighter blue overall really very nice now while these ones are rock lords she's a jewel lord which a which is a different kind of subline as i talked about you got the rock lords you got the jewel lords you have the fossil lords uh you have these little gnarly things so they had several different types of these and she was probably the coolest i think now as you can see this is another one that you're meant to just kind of lay down but i actually do like folding her feet down i just take her weapon and put that there because it kind of meshes well with it and then kind of sit her on that and just kind of stand her like that I sort of like that as a display uh, especially since when we saw her she would be like that so i, d I just like doing it that way uh, now to transform her you just fold these bits down got some nice die cast in here for like the hips in the elbow area fold out the little feet like that fold out her arm there and then you want to rotate it around and then you bring it down so fold that out rotate that around bring that down then you take the head lift that up and rotate that and there you have solitaire and again you can have her hold her weapon which doesn't really securely fit in there but it's very hard to see so covering up you can see just how cool she looks she does have some nice paint on her eyes you got a yellow paint and then some pink for her lipstick articulation for her her head will look left and right as part of the transformation the shoulders really you can rotate them in and out but you in because they do have that hinge right there you kind of can move them in and out but only if you have them like that so it's not like you can move them forward or anything it's a little unfortunate uh, she does bend here at the elbow but inward kind of like gorilla arms uh, her hips move in and out uh, her knees move in and out her feet move forward and back so i mean not really a ton of articulation um there are some points of it 
but it's not really, you know, anything that you're going to use for uh, action figure posing or anything like that. So there is Solitaire, and you can see she's probably one of the biggest here. Although, you probably, again, you can't really see her because I know my background, everybody hates it, but there, you, you can see. Oh, well. That's a little bit better. <laughs> a little bit taller than any of the other ones. Up next for the good guys is Boulder. Uh, made out of tungsten. One thing that is really very cool is the coloring on here has a really cool swirly effect to it giving it a very neat look which i dig you, obviously you see some of the cracks and everything but in terms of a cohesive round nugget of a oh, <laughs> nugget uh but in terms of a cohesive ball of rock i think he does one of the better jobs a couple of them you know kind of stick out a little bit but or at least are oddly shaped he he kind of just looks like a boulder which is perfect i guess uh he does come with his little comic again that's the same the instructions do have his seven steps which it's not really seven steps let's be honest so that's cool uh he does come with his power sword which i don't know if they're stealing that from he-man but it absolutely doesn't look like a power sword it just looks like a rifle that's all it looks like uh, good mold of detail on there you can see you got a little magazine clip up in there you got a little scope uh, both sides have that really nice molded in detail. Uh, the thing that does kind of stink is none of these guys have any weapon storage, which kind of stinks. Uh, to transform him, fold down his legs, rotate these little feet around. There you go. That's one thing I love about getting a brand new figure. Even though that these are 30 years old, the joints are tight, and I like that. Uh, you can take this, detach this, rotate that to the back. These pull out, kind of hinge that out like that, and then you fold out his arms, just like so. Now, you can leave this up like that. I see a lot of people doing that. It kind of keeps his uh, backpack a little bit smaller. But in terms of the cartoon, it was always all the way down. You never saw that big, giant thing. So that, I mean, that's a personal preference kind of thing. You can take his weapon. You have a little hole on the inside of his uh, wrist right there can plug that in that stays in there a little bit better but you have that so you can have him holding that his articulation the head will look left and right again really good detail on the head nicely painted you got like this little silver thing got some nice blue eyes nice sculpting for the face his helmet here is uh orangish in color called kind of comes across as well well not really that's more red that comes across a little bit but darker red i guess uh for his articulation though so you can see that he does rotate here at the shoulder moves in and out moves back bends here at the elbow so good range of motion there for his arms uh, his legs can move uh, back as part of the transformation here at the hip and then also at the knee so uh, I mean complain all you want about rock lords and gobots and stuff they had some better articulation than transformers that's for sure but as for the good guys there they are nugget granite solitaire and boulder and now taking a look at the bad guys, here is uh, the guy that I resented. This is Tombstone. Now what's interesting is that Tombstone was actually voiced in the movie by Peter Cullen, which is kind of funny because, you know, we know Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime. Additionally, Granite was voiced by Michael Bell, who has a very long history with Transformers. And then Solitaire here was voiced by uh, Margot Kidder, who famously played Lois Lane in the original Superman movie. So that's kind of cool. But you you can see uh, he's actually in a pretty good shape also for a rock coming to take a closer look at this guy uh, you can see I mean obviously you got the cracks and everything but all you look around and he looks pretty good now I don't know about a tombstone I guess you could kind of lay him like that but he would technically be upside down as these are his legs and stuff so you could do that and kind of make it look like a tombstone if you wanted to or just lay it down just like so personal preference I guess uh, here is his Reaper weapon which uh, again, don't really know why they, I mean, he, they call it a Sith kind of in, in the bio, but doesn't really look like anything, but nice green color. He's supposed to be made out of quartz, which I, I don't know. I mean, quartz, I usually think of more of a clear kind of thing, but it's possible for his transformation. You just rotate his legs down and under just like so spin that around you can fold these bits out then accordion these arms out like so 
do that on both sides and then fold this head up and there you have yet the evil tombstone you can have him hold his weapon in his hand just like so uh, for his articulation the head uh, actually does have a neck joint so you can get it going up and down right there and then as part of the transformation uh, he's got shoulders that go out and then elbows that go out no forward and back or anything really for that so it's just kind of stuck in this up and down kind of pose he's got uh, forward and back hips they also move in and out and then he bends here at the knee uh, like i said I grew up kind of resenting this figure. He never got lost in my collection. Despite the fact that I lost Nugget, this guy would never disappear. And it always annoyed me. Like, why couldn't I have lost this guy? I don't like this guy's enough. But, I mean, he's still cool nonetheless. I mean, he looks pretty decent from all angles. Uh, you can get some extra green color and everything. You got some extra green color kind of in the chest. It's kind of hard to see. And then it comes around here in his neck as well so in general decent looking figure like i said it's kind of cool that he was voiced by uh the great peter cullen so in terms of tombstone there he is and up next we come to sticks and stones now like i said this is a dual personality kind of one that we really didn't get much of a transformers we had it a couple times on like he-man and such but he's made out of anthracite and magnetite anthracite being coal and you can kind of see that the thing that's neat about this is they got this not really swirly but it's kind of like this two-tone plastic kind of throughout it where you have like a dark almost black color I, I can't tell if that's black or just a really dark green but very dark and then very light color throughout it you can see getting really nice sculpted detail this one is kind of a weirdly shaped rock though whereas all of them kind of resemble i mean this is kind of oddly shaped you got like this big flat section here in the back and then this section here that juts out so it it, it kind of is weird looking to be totally honest with you it's what i mean I, I was talking about how like a lot of these look pretty good most of them do this one is the one that probably stands out as the least best looking although it kind of looks like he's got a giant thumbprint right there which is strange um this is his weapon it's a cactus club which is uh sticks is weapon and then um a dual duty mace which is stone's weapon now the thing is it, you got a little handle right here um and it is only one weapon so i have no idea why they basically refer the, to this as two weapons maybe when sticks holds it it's one when stones holds it it's another i i have no idea but overall cool color i just don't like the shape of it it, it looks more man-made I, I i guess now to transform him uh, the legs you kind of pull away and then rotate down just like that you got a little bit of a springy section here in the hip which allows you to kind of pull away from the body that's how you do that and you come around here and then you just rotate this around and then you spin the little feet around and there you have sticks and stones which one is sticks and which one stones i have no idea i'm just gonna go sticks and stones because it's left and right for me so uh again you can hold the weapon in his hand like this um it you know uh you can do that on the same side on stones side so again i don't know why they refer to it as a different weapon although this doesn't really hold in here all that well i'm trying to that doesn't really tab in that's strange this side tabs in pretty decently um i, I don't i have no idea why it's like that uh but again this is probably the weakest looking out of all of them you got this big giant section that sticks out it's kind of ugly uh, if you could rotate that around i mean you can spin these around i mean if if this was his front that would look pretty cool and leaving that on the back uh except they choose to have this be the front of them with this big giant thing that kind of sticks out I'm not a big fan of how that looks uh, but you got purple and red paint here the faces are a little bit different you can see that he has more of a slant to his eyes whereas his are a little bit more oval shaped different kind of pattern for the teeth they're a little bit bigger here on this side than this one but fairly the same and then the same color and then that carries down here with some uh toenail paint i guess toenail paint that's that's yeah that's what it is uh but you get more of those kind of cross colors which is cool I, I do i do like him uh i i just think that he's the weakest out of 
all of these. Uh, this is one that I think could have been done a little bit better. Uh, no articulation in the head. It is molded into his body, which is cool. I don't mind that. That, that kind of looks neat. Uh, you can see his shoulders do kind of spring out a little bit. They do rotate. Uh, and then they do bend in right here but and, and then they do half rotate but you can't bend them forward so i don't understand really why they wanted to go or have him beat his chest that's kind of a weird point of articulation but it's there uh his hips move forward and back uh they don't really move in and out they they do kind of like i showed you have that little spring so you can kind of spring it out a little bit uh he doesn't rotate or bend at the knee he does rotate and then the feet do kind of pivot a little bit again I, I don't know why you need that kind of pivot but it is there for him uh, as I showed you he can hold his weapon in that hand again don't know why but there you have sticks and stones because they may break your bones but names will never hurt me now we come to slime stone which is uh, made out of silver which again looks really cool the other thing very much like nugget which you can't see me because off to the side uh, is that the silver does wear off on here I'm hoping that it doesn't really do that so much on mine because I don't plan on transforming it a little bit or that much uh, but you come in here you in addition to seeing me hi hi guys you can kind of see like right here that's uh, just a nature of or side effect of the mold itself so you can see that's on that side same thing with nugget so that's not necessarily a fault with the actual toy it's just something that has happened to this uh, in terms of the molding and putting together process but he's a chunk of silver which I, I, I do like it I think he's in terms of a look one of the coolest as well I love nugget I love solitaire I love slimestone just the cool look of it is really neat and I'm honestly surprised and I never knew that this toy existed when I was a kid because I loved Nugget and a lot of it was because of how shiny and cool it was. I'm surprised I had no idea this guy existed. Uh, now for his weapon, it is a slime gun. Again, how that looks like a gun to anyone, I have no idea but we'll show you how to attach that again he does come with his comic book it is the exact same uh, i do kind of wish that it was different because these are uh, oh there's sticks and stones i do wish because this is part of like another wave of toys they continued the story because when you come to the back it says to be continued and it never was continued so maybe it's uh, in reading this Magma has won the Fortress Stonehead and now claims it as his headquarters. You know what this is? I think that this is like a prequel to the actual movie because Stonehead is where he was in the movie. And if this is saying Magmar has won the Fortress of Stonehead, excellent. My time this night has been well spent. Stonehead has given up one of its most deadly secrets. So I think that's uh, kind of what it, this is meant to be. Uh, you, you have Nugget here. There's no GoBots in this. So it's almost as if um, this is before the movie. So that's kind of neat. Me. So that's probably what the to be continued means. To be continued in the future length film or something like that. So uh, you do also have his instructions. It's just this little teeny tiny sheet. There's really nothing that you can do with it. Although this doesn't actually show you how to hold his weapon. All the other ones showed you how to hold his weapon. Oh no, all right, yeah, it does, duh. There it is right there. So, to transform him, he's a little bit tricky to do when he's in this mode. Uh, it, it goes a little bit different. You kind of have to get your finger in here to lift these panels up, but the easiest way to do it is just pull this whole thing out like that, and then kind of separate all this. You pull this out like so, and then angle the feet down and around like that these little bits right here as you can see they come down and that's the last part of the transformation you close that down there but when you do it, it kind of locks it in there and there's no real way to get in there i mean you could use a fingernail if you had on i mean although i mean even my fingernail it goes in fairly well and i'm not going to use anything because it's chrome i'm not going to use anything to to wedge it out so kind of just have to go like that to transform them so rotate that around you kind of leave his legs spread out like so you can get him to stand a little bit more up and down but his legs don't or his feet don't fully go down to the ground so then you just angle this angle this and then this part here can get a little bit tricky put your finger in there wedge this out and wedge that out and there <laughs> is a slime stone and really again really cool 
look for this guy. Now, in the original, it, he does have a green and a red eye. He does have two green eyes here. So I have seen people that have customized that and painted one of the eyes green. You can see that actually on the package as well. You can see like the little red eye right there. I'm trying to remember in the movie if he had that. I think he did, to be honest. But oh, again, overall, really nice look to this guy. Again, probably one of the best looking, I think. Uh, he does have die cast as well, whereas all of them kind of have die cast in them. Uh, these are more structural. You know, by, by that I mean like his leg is made out of die cast. Uh, up here, I want to say his arms uh, up here uh, that connect uh, this outer section to his body, those are also die cast. So I, I guess I shouldn't say structural. They're more, you know, part of the actual body body uh, whereas like for example solitaires are her hips or her shoulders so those are more structural this is more uh, in terms of the overall look uh, is a die cast now for his articulation the head will rotate um, it's kind of hard to get into you got to move that kind of down there but the head does spin kind of left and right uh, these little pieces here do kind of get in the way in the rotation you can rotate his arms around but if you have them all the way down like it's supposed to be uh, it, it does rub into the the, the little shoulder pieces right here and uh, to minimize the wear you probably don't want to do that that much so kind of lift those up just get those out of the way kind of hinges in and out a bit I guess you could say his little hands down here move forward and back as well uh, the hips move in and out the feet kind of just kind of stand there so not a ton of articulation uh, for his weapon get this lifted up and then he just it just clips on here I think you know around the around the side if you could see what I'm doing so there's his little weapon um, maybe it's supposed to be this way and I have no idea where's those little instructions what's it say oh yeah I guess it's showing this thing being on the outside so um, it doesn't really do it very well there oh well it actually shows I'm holding it in this hand so I wonder if it's more designed for this hand let us see shall we yeah, well, I, I guess that's uh, him holding his weapon. So you can do that. Uh, I'm not going to really do too much with it. But there is Slimestone. Again, really cool look. Uh, probably one of my favorites out of him. He is small uh, by comparison. You can see he's actually even smaller than a nugget here not by a ton but in the movie he was a lot smaller uh like ridiculously smaller than like down here so it's still cool that he's small in stature but i think he should be a little bit smaller uh so kidding all these guys kind of shifted over now we come to the last one in the group that being magmar and again um uh, you, you look at him and he obviously, I, I don't think he really blends in as a rock nearly as well. Uh, kind of similarly to how you know, Sticks and Stones didn't really look cohesive. I don't really think Magmar does either. I mean, the legs come up and do a pretty good job. But, like, you look at the side, and just none of it really looks very good. Like, I mean, you can plainly see, like, here's his arms, here's his body, here's his legs. I, I don't think it is as cohesive looking uh, now he's supposed to be made out of uh, an igneous rock which is uh, a hardened lava i don't know necessarily if uh, that comes across in here good detail with the sculpting throughout the entire thing though i just again i i don't feel as if the overall look form is all that cohesive uh, now for his weapon it's his axe rifle um, he just holds it. Uh, I don't really know how you can use this as a rifle. It just kind of looks more like a club of sorts. Uh, maybe you can hold it when you transform him. I'll take a look at it. To transform him, you just rotate his legs down like so. He stands up. Rotate these arms around to the side. Take his lower section of the arm, lower that down. Uh, and then again, this is really strange how they have, they have like an articulation point right there. I don't know why they couldn't have, they should have rotated it around. It seems weird. Uh, rotate that down and then you fold out his head. And he looks really cool. Uh, in terms of his robot mode, looks like a bad guy. Uh, that's what I really like about him. And one thing that I'll say is that all of these rock lords basically 
rumble, 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 <laughs> instead of transform, uh, they all transform very similarly to how their actual cartoon counterparts did, which to me is cool. I like that. Looking at Magmar a little bit closer though, you can see some extra colors in there. You get some green with uh, the little elbow sections, some shin sections right here, some nice orangish color thrown in here in his abdomen, and then the little shoulder areas. He's got a little mohawk. I mean, uh, I don't remember his mohawk being green per se. I thought it was more like a darker brown, but eh, whatever. Get some yellow for his eyes. Like I said, overall, really bad guy looking i i do dig it uh, for his weapon you can have him hold that like so there's his little axe uh, again i don't know how you would hold it as a rifle though i guess no cannot can't really hold it as a rifle so i don't know how you know, we're just going to use it as an axe it is what it is uh first articulation um i guess he can look down as part of the transformation. The shoulders rotate, I guess you can say, as part of the uh, transformation, they go in and out as well. Uh, again, so he's got an elbow joint that goes inward. I really don't know why they couldn't have, I mean, it does collapse in. I don't know why they couldn't have had that rotate around so that his elbow would move forward. Uh, I think they could have. It's it just, they didn't for whatever reason. So uh, you do have that articulation forms a rawr. Uh, his hips move forward, they don't really move back, and oh, you get some nice green detail on the inside as well too. And then his knees bend forward. Uh, you probably could have made it so they bent backwards, but again, you would have been left with like a weird junction right there. I think they could have did it, but eh, whatever. Uh, so really cool looking on this guy as well. Uh, you can see he's a big character as well, but looking at all of them, uh, I am really quite happy with this collection. It, it, I know, they're GoBots for the most part, or a spawn of the GoBots. And everybody hates the GoBots if you like Transformers. Well, technically, GoBots were around before the Transformers. So they have a, a unique to this, they're to themselves, uh, I guess. Uh, just by themselves. Uh, I, I, well, I don't know what kind of language I'm speaking in, but I am happy that I picked these guys up. They are quite cool, I think. Now, I understand that they are probably not going to be something that a lot of people are going to be you know, all that into, but I think that in the history of Transformer Robots, and now GoBots are, I mean, the franchise of GoBots is actually owned by Transformers, or by Hasbro, I should say. So, and sometimes they have reused the names of certain characters in Transformers. So, I'm, I'm really honestly very happy that I went through and, uh, pick these guys up uh they're they're fun they're different uh they add a uniqueness to my collection and uh, i thought you guys would enjoy seeing them so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video uh, i've enjoyed making it and going down this memory lane and i really hope that you guys enjoyed it as well now rock lords obviously are only mostly going to be available on the secondary market like ebay and things like that loose you're probably looking at 15 to 20 dollars for individual characters solitaire is going to cost you a little bit more uh, and then nugget and slimestone depending on the condition of the chrome that'll fluctuate as well carded though you're looking at about 40 to 50 dollars for some of these guys taking out solitaire entirely i was able to get every one of these figures for about 25 bucks and as you can see they were carded which was a tremendous deal and like i said earlier i could not pass that up so if you're looking for them you're gonna have to keep your eyes on private sellers and eBay and things like that. But in the history of Transformers, GoBots has a place. So if you're looking for them, good luck and happy hunting. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I wanna thank you guys for tuning in. This has been Optibotomous. Don't forget that if you like this video to please, hit that thumbs up button. It goes a long way towards helping me out and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. It's free and you'll get instant email notifications whenever I upload a new video and you'll never miss out on a future review of mine. Or if you're already subscribed, now more than ever, it's important to make sure that you get those email notifications. We all know that that YouTube subscription box is a total joke. And the best way to ensure that you get my videos is to click on that little bell right below this video and double check your settings to make sure that they're set so that you get those email notifications. And as always, until next time, <laughs> till all are one. Rock the